Oh, you too. Beanie from the bedroom here. You get Todd junkie. So, in today's video, boys and girls, I'm going to go over in complete detail my Greeny Moore 59 Les Paul Replica, replica Tribute Clone, whatever you want to call it. Guitar. So, <clears throat> Let's start with where I got it from. I bought this from J-U-G-G -G Jugs Guitar Shop from AliExpress. It's the only guitar I bought from AliExpress. And he had a rating um, of like 65%. But he was the only one out of all the pictures that, and they all looked exactly like it was the same picture that, that someone just took and everyone copied, that actually got back to me in texting back and forth through their messaging service on AliExpress and actually sent me the photos of the exact guitar that I had gotten. So the other ones really didn't. Now, this was $318 shipped to my house. I've seen them for $250, you know, $249, um, give or take $50 bucks either way, plus a good $100 bucks for shipping from China. So you're either going to pay $100 or $150 on top of the price but I made it a point to look for a guitar that had shipping included because then I'm not worried about paying this person and that person I want the responsibility to fall all on the one company or manufacturer or person that's selling me the guitar and through AliExpress they don't get the money until you receive the guitar. So you could receive the guitar as I did. And it did take a couple of months from AliExpress. That's the one part that sucks. It took over two months to get the guitar. And it took about a week of going back and forth with messaging on this, that, and the other thing on the guitar. Just to make sure it's the real deal. I'm going to get what I'm going to get a whole bit. No bait and switch going on. And once I got the guitar, I, I opened it up, and I was <laughs> right away. I was amazed at how good it looked, you know, all the way around. And then I tuned it, and I just let it sit. That's what I do all the time. Whenever I get a guitar, new or used, I tune it to E, and I just check how... You know, if I need to do a quick setup, if I have to adjust the neck, if I have to adjust the tailpiece, if I have a tremolo and I got to adjust that, if I got to do anything with the springs on the back, you know, whatever. I set the guitar up and I bend the strings back and forth, make sure it's in tune, and I just let it sit for about an hour. And I come back in, then I plug it in, and then I actually see how it, how it works, you know. Um, I start playing it. Now, once I tune it, I tune it and I do run up and down the neck and make sure that I've got no buzzing and make sure that electronics work. But I don't really play it. After about an hour, I come back in. Then I play it. I start playing it. And I start just, you know, again, I just go up and down the neck, the fingerboard, you know, every, every string, every fret. Make sure that I've got no buzzing, no, no you know, sprouting, no nothing. And then I just start putting on jam tracks that I, I play to all the time that I'm familiar with so that I just want to hear the guitar. And right away, I was impressed with it. So after that, I finally went to AliExpress and I clicked on that I received the guitar only because I checked it out first. I didn't say I got it and then I... I an hour or two or a day or two later, I mentioned a problem. I want to make sure I didn't have a problem. And had I had a problem, I would have messaged, you know, um, AliExpress and voiced that opinion. 
So that's how I how I, I worked it with the guitar. I still see these now. They're on AliExpress. They're on DHgate, which I would never buy a guitar from DHgate. I bought one once, and it was a nightmare. It was a nightmare dealing with DHgate and having to pretty much go on trial and justify why I want money off of this hunk of junk that they sent me. It was nothing like the photos. And luckily for me, I had photos, again, that they sent me that I could send to DHgate and say, look, there are two different kinds of guitars here. What's going on? So, but I had to jump through hoops. I didn't have that problem with AliExpress. If I had, maybe I would have had to go through the same rigmarole. I don't know. But I see these also on Reverb. So you got to pick and choose. I, you know, I, I can't tell you that um, Jug's guitar shop or guitar store is the only place to go. I'm, I can't say for certain that you're going to get the exact same guitar that I have in front of me right now. So keep that in mind. Um, before I go any further, I should have mentioned this as a declaimer uh, right from the get-go. If you're a guitar snob and you just look at these videos just to post your, your BS comments, just turn me off right now. <laughs> just stop the video and go on to something else. Because if I see one negative derogatory comment, about how well, what do you expect for cheap labor, and what do you expect? Oh, uh, uh, you know, an eleven-year-old girl makes that in the factory and uh, slave labor, and this. Look, the people in China, you know, granted, what's going on in China with the, and put that aside of the people that are they're actually good people that are in China that are trying their best to make a buck and to survive and to live, and yes, the cost of living isn't like it is here in the states. Or anywhere else for that matter. So they do bust their butt and work hard to make money. And I'm not going to begrudge somebody for doing that just because it's coming from China or Vietnam or Indonesia or, or Taiwan or um, South Korea, Mexico. You know what I'm saying? So if that's the case with you, if you've got a problem with that and you just want to stir up some crap, then just stop the video and move on. Because I'm just going to delete you guys from, from those comments. Now, back to the guitar. This was 319 shipped to my house. It took about two months. I think it was two months and, and a week, something like that. I don't remember. I think I, I mentioned it on my very first video of this guitar. And I have no issues, nothing to complain about. The pickups were okay. I had the same thing where the, the pickup was uh, upside down. I don't believe it was reversed because there was no different in difference in putting it in the middle to get that out of phase sound. So I think that wasn't an issue. And they weren't microphonic. I couldn't talk through them. I couldn't put on like thick, heavy distortion and, and crank it up and talk through the pickups like you do on some pickups. If I lean the guitar towards the amp, I didn't get that squealing effect. So the pickups weren't bad. They were actually marked up, scratched up to look older. You know, like everything else that's on here. They were aged, appropriate. But I just wanted a good set of pickups. I wanted the real deal. So I got these from a guy out of Australia, Fabian. And they're, and I've, posted his link before. I'll probably do the same thing on, on in my um, description for this. These were like 200 bucks and $20 shipping at the time. I think now they're on sale for 180 plus 20 bucks shipping. He, I had spoken to him. I said, look, this, this is what I'm doing. I told him the whole deal uh, going back and forth. And he sent me this, this pair of pickups for 180 bucks shipped right to my house. I had them within two two weeks. And it's wired purposely with the magnet reversed the way you see it. So I definitely get that out of phase sound out of them. And I'm glad that I did it. Now, <clears throat> I've seen people take humbucking pickups out of the guitar 
and you know remove the cover that's the tricky part and slide the magnet out and flip it around and put it back you know slide it out flip it, and put it back in and then mount it back on the guitar if you want to do that you could do that it's a bit tricky um i've seen guys just trying to remove the cover destroy the guitar you pick up so and the fact that i knew it was going to be a cheap pickup along with the uh the pots and the wiring that i had in there i was going to change the pickups regardless so you could go down that route if you want to just to save a buck but i just wanted to put what's known as that that um greeny more tone in the guitar i also had the 10 10 cent pots out of here i put nickel pots they had dime pots in here and i put 500k nickel pots i put the um the 500k i think it's i think it's the ones and twos there's a there's two different ones for the volume and two different ones for the tone so i had them installed um they were anywhere from nine to ten bucks a pot you can get them off of amazon or it depends on what your tech if your tech has them he's sometimes he's got so many he'll say five bucks a piece sometimes he won't have a a, a big in, um, um supply of them and they might be 10 bucks a piece but regardless so 318 for the guitar 180 shipped to my house for the pickups and it was i think he actually charged me nine bucks a piece for the two volume and the tune pot the two tone pots and on top of that the other only thing that i put into it was the locky tuners i knew bob spurzel from back in the day and he had actually sent me a bag and i still have the envelope he sent me because i keep all my tools in it i had lost the pins when you screw the, the locking tuners if you screw them out all the way i think now they have a stop pin so that you can't unscrew it but the original bob spurzel tuners if you unscrewed it all the way then the little ring would fall out and then the pin would slap slap out slide out and on a row of six there was a pin length for each um tuner so i got to know him I, I spoke to him on the phone and he sent me stuff totally for free nicest guy in the world and i was thinking about going you know asking i i, I he was older when i was when i knew him in the 90s so uh i i didn't look it up but i just don't i assume he's not around anymore but I was going to get the Spurzel tuners that Gary Moore has on his guitar. He's got Spurzel, but they're not locking Spurzel tuners. And I just said to myself, I, I don't like winding a, a string. I just want to pull it through, tighten it, tune it, clip it, and be done with it. So that's the only thing that's that's different look-wise is the locking tuners. So they're re they resemble the locking Grover tuners on here. Now... <clears throat> What I did to this, outside of just taking it out of the box, changing the pickups, the the the, the knobs, and the the tuning um, pegs, I totally went crazy on this guitar. And on my phone, I can't tell you how many pictures of the original Greeny Moore Fifty Nine LP that I have, that I just wanted to resemble it almost to a T. So what I had done to it is the knobs that I came with, they weren't this, the, as dark as these. The color was a little bit lighter. And I can't tell you how many different pairs of knobs I went through until I found the right color ones that have that tinge to them. These are fine. These are the knobs that came with the guitar. And they're fine. These are the ones that I had to change. So I did that. I also had to remove the uh, treble and rhythm off of the uh, poker chip on here. And what I did was I just I used some um, Goo Gone to remove that. And I kind of like scuffed it up. I 
I used like a real light kind of, um, you know, the, the stainless steel and just kind of like brushed it around a little bit just to make it look kind of dirty so it doesn't look brand new. So there's nothing on the poker chip. The other thing that I had done to it was <clears throat> I had to relic it a little bit more. And what I mean by that is this was light, so I had to darken where around here off of the um, Tiger Maple Lemon Drop. And I'm, I believe this is a veneer. I don't think it's a, a regular cap. I think it, I know it's a mahogany body. And I don't remember if it said um, Tiger Maple Top or veneer. So, and I did have the pickups out, and I did look at it. And I and I I think it looked like a veneer top to me. That's why I'm saying veneer, but I really don't remember. So I had to darken this up, and I tried everything. And really, what I had done is I just used a screwdriver, and I used a pencil because I tried everything to to get it dirty to make it look like it's like it like it's up here. So. This came out pretty good. This was pretty white, and I had to dirty that up. So I used pencil. That's all pencil, graphite number two pencil. This is pencil in here, but for some reason, it wipes off a lot more down there than it does here. It stays more up here. I don't want to take sandpaper to try to sand it. I, I tried it with stainless steel to get down to the wood more so that it would absorb stain because I use wood stain, you know, also on here. And it would just wipe off. <clears throat> so I got, it was, it worked fine on here, but it didn't. So I just stuck with the pencil. And then while I had the pencil out, I just penciled this in again. So this was wood stain with pencil on top, and then I wiped it off. I had to also put the scratch here because on his guitar, it has a scratch right there and again I used a screwdriver and I, I had the picture and I'm copying the picture and then I just took a pencil a number two pencil again and I just went in there and then I wiped it and make sure none of the graphite would wipe out what else did I do a, I had to take a pick guard off of another LP that I had and line it up with this because I had to drill the holes it didn't have the holes drilled where the where the pick guard was installed so i put i mounted that on here i drilled it then i took it out and then again i used a pencil um, to fill in the holes just to make it look dirty i did the same thing here <clears throat> i had to take a screwdriver and scratch off just a little bit where his fingernails would come to use the knobs and scratch around the knobs and once I did that I used again I used the 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 um, oil with the stain in it and then pencil I also put the the pins in here they were like eight nine dollars from Amazon and Gary's is facing that way I've seen on original 59s and especially like Jimmy Page's 59, they face on an angle. But Gary's was facing that way, so I just made sure that they were facing that way, the pins that you could see on the volume and the tone. I don't, I don't know what they would call them. They're like washes with a, with a, a set so that you could see what number you're on. Um, what else did I did? The back on here, this was, this was good, good enough. It wasn't exact like Gary's but it's it's good enough for me the way it is I had to work on the neck some more so what I did was I used the stainless steel again and then I used sandpaper but what I found that was best is I used a, a screwdriver and I should show you exactly so this is the bag that I got from <laughs> Bob Spurzel back in the 90s. This is the actual screwdriver I used. So I use a screwdriver to make my, my scratch here. And I use it to 
put some more scratches in where his fingers would be when he's playing. I also used the side of the screwdriver, the flat part, where it's got ridges on it. And I used that to try to chip away. You can see here that part of the neck. If you get a, a fingernail in there and try to pick away at it, you can get it. So I tried doing that starting from the, the binding of the neck and going around. And I was trying to just pick at it. And then I took the screwdriver out and, and I, I went to, to do it. And as I did that, I, I purely by accident, I turned the, the flathead part where the ridges are and I slipped. And lo and behold, it started taking the finish off instead of just sanding it, you know, lighter. So all of this is what took me a long time to about two days ago. I think it was, no, it was, no, it was, uh, I started two days ago. I finished it last night and I was just going like that and getting it all off. And then I used my, again, my sanding block. This thing here, it's like a, um, a hard grit sandpaper on a sponge. It's great because you could push on it and it'll curve around. And it's also good if you have sharp edges on your, your frets. So I use this on the back of the neck. Let me just take it out of the bag to show you what it looks like. You see how it's spongy? So you can see I use the sides when I get a guitar and it's too sharp on the frets. And I just run it up and down and boom, it's done. So I use this for the first time. You can see it over there. On the neck, last night, I was up till about 12 o'clock <laughs> playing with this thing, getting it right. And then I just took my triple zero stainless steel and this here. I keep it in the bag. Um, sometimes I'll get the last bag. This was the triple zero that I had. The last bag I had was four zero stainless steel. I got it from Home Depot. It was like it came with uh, two. I think it was six, six or eight in, in a bag for a couple of dollars. And the last one that I had in the bag, brand new, someone that came to my house and bought a guitar, I gave it to him so that he could work on his guitars. And I used that. The other thing is. This is, again, this is the um, staining oil. This is the lemon oil with stain in it. So it, you can see on a, the bottle. I use that on everything. I use that on all my fingerboards, whether it be rosewood or ebony. I also use it on my Carmel flamed maple neck and fingerboards on my Holly Benton guitars. And, you know, after going up and down with my stainless steel, I use that, I wipe it in. And, for example, here's one that I just did. Look how dark that neck is. Now, if you go back to any of the other videos I have with this guitar, this neck was a lot lighter and it looked a, a lot drier. Now it looks so dark and it's, you could see the flamed maple a lot better. I also did that on my Telecaster that I'm going to make a video on once I get that back because I'm changing the pickup in the um, bridge. But I also worked on that neck, and that neck is a lot darker than my very first video that I made with it, and it looks so much better. So I use that on, on the guitar, and I use it, I wipe the whole guitar down. Any spots that are open, you know, and especially the holes, it fills in wherever the raw wood is, and it just makes it look old. It makes it makes it look darker. It makes the fingerboard. This fingerboard was lighter when I first got it, and I used it on this fingerboard. And this fingerboard is like a beautiful chocolate, kind of like an Indian rosewood look fingerboard, and almost really looks aged, you know like I've had it for a long time, especially when you're comparing it to guitars now that have the laurel fingerboards and, and everything else that's not a real rosewood fingerboard anymore. But 
Yeah, and then I just wiped the back of the neck, you know, because it was pretty raw at this point. Uh, and I just wiped the whole thing down and around the back of the headstock, you know, in the body, in the front, and I just let it dry. And then I came in once it was dry, and I just buffed it up with a, with a dry rag, a dry cloth. Now, the other thing that I did to it is I made the headstock look like it was cracked like Gary Moore's. So again, I took, if you could see it, because I don't see it in the, in the, the phone as I'm looking at it. Okay, there, see it? So again, I had the picture of the headstock on my, on, you know, in front of me. And I was again with my trusty screwdriver and I was you know, going from one end to the other and making sure that it looked identical to Gary Moore's because his was broken from a car accident. He had it in the back of the, the in the boot of a, a car. He was going to a gig. He got rear-ended. And from what I recall, the headstock broke, and I think he, he hurt his hand. And he had the headstock repaired, but because he hurt his hand, I don't know if it's the same accident that, hurt that you know broke the guitar um he had to get surgery done on his hand and he had to cancel a couple of gigs and that's why he had to sell his peter green guitar because he had another 59 that was impeccable it didn't have any any wear and tear anything like that and it didn't have a repair headstock and he had to do that just to get himself out of debt because he had to pay off the concerts that he he had to cancel out, cancel out on something to that effect. So yeah, and that's the other thing that I did was, and I tried to chip up around the headstock where his is. So I would look and I would see and try to chip it up. And with that, I used this file. So I would use this part of the file and just give a little, whoosh, 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 just to try to get it to look. I again. I'm doing it because I'm a huge fan of Gary Moore. Um, I've been following this this guy since I think it was oh, 80s. Yeah, it was in the 80s. I've been following him, I think it was around 88, 89. Vivi, Vivian Campbell turned me on to Gary Moore. And I was like, okay, I, I found a DVD. No, it was a, a VHS of him playing in London. And I was like, wow, he is as good as Vivian said he was. And I've been hooked ever since. So I've got all his CDs. I've got his um, whatever he's got on DVD. I watch everything that's on YouTube with him, even his interviews. That's how much of a, of a huge fan I am. And I've got a handful of guitar heroes of mine that I'm huge fans of and I follow. And I try to learn as much as I can. I don't know why. So yeah, so I made sure that the headstock looked like it was cracked. I made sure that the scratch was up here. The poker chip was just plain and not a bright white, almost like a vanilla, uh, you know, kind of um, off-white color. And I just blackened this up with some stain and pencil. I did this with some stain and it didn't work, but I also used pencil. And, you know, the scratch box around here. And my, my trusty tool was this little flathead screwdriver, the file, stainless steel, the sanding block, and the wood oil. And I, I'll put a link to this probably as well as where I got it from. Because I, I had to, actually, that's what's left of this. So I, I bought a brand new bottle. I don't have it in here. I have it in my garage on my shelf with all my other supplies. But And that was like $5 from Amazon. And this is the final result. This was a little worn here, and I just took, I had a, a electric sander, and I just, because after coming down and playing it, it was, I just wanted it a little bit smoother. But I didn't want it to do like an Ace Fraley where he just, 
rounded it off nice and smooth on one of his guitars. I still wanted it to resemble like an LP with the lip here, but it was just a little worn, but I just won't, just made it a little bit more smoother. So when I'm playing, because I'm used to strats, when I come down, I'm not getting slammed in the hand with that, that point. And I just, again, I just went with how the neck is. And the neck has that feel where you could feel between the stain and the, the clear coat, whatever it is, and the raw wood. And I was going to sand it to smoothen it out, but I think that's the way Gary's is. So, And it doesn't bother me while I'm playing. You know, so that's it. That's it in a nutshell. I just wanted to go over every little detail, and I hope I did with the guitar. Also, when I got the guitar, it said Les Paul here, and you could see where it said Les Paul, and I, I used I use Google on it to remove that. When I bought this guitar from AliExpress, the headstock was just black, and I was fine with that because I was going to have a decal made up that said Greeny Moore and just put it across the top, you know, Greeny slash Moore. And it came with the Gibson logo and, you know, um, Les Paul here. So this is a real logo that's in the wood. <laughs> the Les Paul, I was able to, I had to use Super Gugan to remove that. And I finally got, we could see it still a little bit. You could see the script work there. And I put on the back, you know, 59 Greeny Moore replica. Because I don't want, if I, if I take this out, the, the jam somewhere, if, I, if, I, if I'm going to play somewhere, when I went to get my pickups done, I don't want someone to think this is a real 59 Les Paul. And I don't want them to think it's that $50,000 Les Paul or $20,000 Les Paul. Just because you bring it to a guitar tech, and the guitar tech that claims he knows everything doesn't, may not know everything, and may mistake this as the the real deal, and not know that it's a it's a copycat of a of a Gibson Les Paul. And I just I'm I'm don't want anyone to think I'm trying to, you know, uh, fool anybody. Plus, I don't want someone to say, hey, you know, those a '59 LP, that's like a thousand million bucks and then someone breaks into his store or the next day he says someone broke into his store and then my guitar is gone yeah i'm i'm funny i think that way i'm from new york so i don't trust anybody <laughs> you know what i mean so that's it that's everything that i could think of on this guitar so if you if you're thinking about it there's so many and i would say AliExpress was all right. I had a pleasant experience with them. Some people have problems. Some A lot of people don't. But you could also find it off of Reverb. And Reverb's the same thing. Reverb is more of, of, you know, if you have a problem, they might address it a lot better. And I'm only comparing it to what I had to go through with DHgate and the people there that was selling me a hunk of chunk. So, Yeah. I hope this helped you. If uh, you have any questions, because I'm sure I left some stuff out, put them in the comment. And if you have your own project, you know, um, share it. Share share in the comments because uh, the fan base that I have, the other problem that I have, and I'm going to say this for the last time, is that this guitar came from Peter Green. Gary Moore knew Peter Green was friends with him, bought it from him, I think for like $150. I think he had a guitar that, like an SG, he had to sell in order to buy the 59 Peter Green guitar from him. And he, Gary Moore, in my opinion, and if you don't think so, if, if don't start an argument over it in the comments, again, my opinion, Gary Moore was the guy that made this Peter Green guitar famous and that's where it became what i'm calling the peter the, the the greeny moore guitar i don't think kirk hammett if i pronounce his word his name properly from metallica i don't think he he first of all he doesn't hold a candle to either one of those two guitar players and now that they're calling it the greeny 
Hammett guitar really pisses me off because Gary Moore was the one that made the 59 Peter Green guitar. Peter Green made it um, famous because of the pickup configuration and the tone. Gary Moore made it famous because he played it his entire life. And Kirk Hammett has nothing to do with it. He's just the guy that bought it, got lucky, got an in inside scoop, and scooped it up for a decent price. So, yeah, to me, this will always be a 59 Greeny Moore LP. And... Uh, now that I'm, I'm done with that rant, <laughs> I'm going to sign off. Thanks for watching. Have a good day, everyone.